Hi, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, plans for Catalonia's vote on independence are on hold. So what does this mean for the region's separatist movement? Do you remember the last time we actually looked at Catalonia as a show's topic was about two years ago. Malika Vlau is our digital um, producer looking mm -hmm. out for today's comments from right. our online community. What mm -hmm. are you seeing? Well, they're definitely still coming in. And though mm. the Spanish court's decision to put this on hold, yeah. it hasn't really deterred Catalans online okay. from their calling for independence, really. Uh -huh. And they're doing so with the hashtag 9N2014. They're also sharing images of themselves out in the street. Thousands rallied in Barcelona earlier this week in a call for independence. And so we're going to show those pictures, show that momentum. We can't do it without you, though, during this show we need you to tweet us your questions and comments with hashtag AJStream and we will have more on Catalonia in a moment but here at the stream we're always trying to keep an eye on the hashtags that are trending and here are a few that are trending right now Catalonians were scheduled to vote November 9th on independence, though the result was not meant to be binding, many believed in its symbolism. Earlier this month, Spain's constitutional court suspended the vote, a move supported by the country's leadership, but angering many Catalonians. According to the polls, more than 70% of people in Catalonia want a referendum. Catalan leader Artur Mas has said that some form of consultation involving ballots and ballot boxes will go ahead next month, but many say that's not democracy and not good enough. The issue has been a source of growing contention among Catalan leaders. So now, what lies ahead for the Catalan independence movement? Independence movement. Joining us from Barcelona, Alfred Bosque is a member of the Spanish Parliament and a member of the Republican left of Catalonia. In Barcelona, we have Ines Arrimadas. She is a spokesperson for the Citizen Party and representative of the Parliament of Catalonia. Also in Barcelona, Adria Alcina is a political commentator and a supporter of an independent Catalonia. And in Madrid, we have Sonia Andoz. And she is a political scientist and a lecturer at Antonio de Nebrija University. So, hola, welcome everybody. It's great to have you here in the stream. Okay, Ines. I want you to be candid, very honest. When the public in Spain found out that this vote for Catalonian independence for November the 9th was suspended, what was the reaction? I think anybody knew that an illegal referendum will not take place into Catalonia because we are speaking about a self-determination referendum in Catalonia and our legal system doesn't allow us to make this. And I, I know that the government of Catalonia knew uh, knew about that situation, but anyway, uh, they have been promoting the necessity of making an, an a referendum, but uh, that is an illegal one, and it would be the same in countries as France or Germany. You know, I I do recognize their self determination right. It is a very important one. Yeah. But in Catalonia, we don't have that situation. We are not a colony. We are not an occupied territory. So it's a normal thing that a member of the European Union, as Spain, does not allow a self determination right. a referendum. But what, but what was the one. but what was the reaction though, Ines? I, I just want to get a feeling for what it would have been like to be in Spain when that was breaking news. How do how do people react? Yeah, I fear. Yeah, I fear that uh, many people are disappointed. I mean, many people who are convinced about about how good is the independence ah. uh, are disappointed with the government. But I think that the government of Catalonia knew that the Spanish government will not allow an illegal self-determination referendum. Hmm. I think it's a, it's a common sense thing. Let's, let, me, let me just bring in Alfred. Alfred, um, MP, Spanish Parliament. Um, were you surprised? Did you think this was going to happen? No, this was predictable. Uh, I must say I favor a democratic vote about independence, and I'm pro-independence myself. 
because I think uh, Catalonia is a nation which is not better than any other nation, but it's no less than any other nation. So obviously, when this took place, it was predictable, but still, we were hugely disappointed. Thousands of people went to the streets protesting about what was, what, what was seen as a, uh, a very biased uh, decision, politicized decision, influenced by the Spanish government, which is blocking a democratic vote on independence. And that's the main obstacle. There's an institutional blockage uh -huh. of Spanish power to people voting about their future. Do you think you failed, Alfred? No, no, no. I mean, we're going to vote. Uh, we're still going to vote on November the 9th. Obviously, it's not going to be as official as it was uh, foreseen, mm -hmm. but we will do it the only way we can do it, okay? Right. So, uh, obviously, some people are disappointed, but we will, s we will still vote on November the 9th and vote about the independence of Catalonia. We're entitled to that. We are uh, mm, people, citizens with full rights, like anywhere else in the 21st century in the Western, uh, in Western Europe. So, so we will do it, of course. Well, Adria, I want to go to you here because you heard Alfred say some people were disappointed. I will say online that disappointment is palpable. Carolyn writes in, it seems to be that the Spanish government has behaved outrageously and not recognizing people's right to self-determination. And on Facebook, Adria, this person writes, the governmental coalition, CIU, kept saying that they would not do anything illegal. And that's why they decided to stop the referendum. But many of us feel betrayed. Is this a sense that you relate to, that feeling of betrayal? Or are you disappointed as well? I think there, there's two kind of disappointments. First disappointment, as uh, Ms. Arimadas was saying and, and Mr. Boss was saying as well, uh, is with the Spanish government. Uh, at some point, we believed that uh, Spain was a democracy, and as a democracy, as an advanced democracy, just like Canada or the UK did, they would find a way to make things legal, to make a referendum legal. Obviously, this didn't happen, and, and the government of Spain just left the constitutional court the dirty job of declaring this, of suspending this vote, this first vote. After this, there were two options, either continuing with uh, with the vote, with the vote as planned, uh, which would entail, which entail, which would entail uh, some degree of uh, disobeying the the Spanish state. That was something that maybe members of the parliament, such as uh, Mr. Bosk, could have uh, could have done. Mm. However, uh, it was risky to make the whole Catalan government mm, to disobey the the ruling of the mm, constitutional court. Sure. So, at some point, the president and part of the parties decided to uh, shift. The, the kind of consultation they were they were planning to do, and uh, this was done last week, and this did generate a certain disappointment. This is the second disappointment, as uh, some people, including myself, at some point, were expecting that the government, the Catalan government, would go would go a bit farther in this uh, dis uh, disobeying the the state. Sure. However, this 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 um, disappointment was more out of this. Uh, sensation, this feeling that the parties were not really uh, agreeing on what was uh, good for the future of Catalonia, on on holding some sort of vote, uh, than rather th than than of the not about the the, the vote itself, because the vote is going to happen on uh, November 9th. I I actually th uh, think it's a it's a right it's a right way to of voting. Provided that after this there will be a second round of voting, which will be probably snap elections that will mm. make things clear and democratically clear as well. All right. Okay. So out of the corner of my eye, I was sneakily watching Sonia, who was writing something down. Sonia, what did you write down? I was just taking note of how many times that Ria said disappointment, because I think it's becoming uh, an important thing to talk about regarding the situation, the current situation. Oh. Disappointment is very difficult to manage for politicians and I think both sides are not really aware of how difficult it's going to be for both of them to manage their disappointed part of population. Mm. Okay, so let me, let's go back However, to... just let me, yeah, let me, Arie, let me weigh in, in on this. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's true that there's been a, a, a great degree of disappointment. However, uh, this is, and this is last time uh, breaking news almost, <laughs> in the last in the last uh, hour, the two main parties in uh, Catalonia, which include Mr. Bosk's party, uh, have agreed again on uh, going ahead with uh, the vote as uh, it was planned last week and uh, to put all efforts, 100% efforts, that this second version of the vote will go ahead and will go right. 
All right, so here I am a little bit confused and you can help me not be so confused. November the 9th, there was going to be an unbinding vote. November the 9th, there is still going to be an unbinding vote. What's the difference? What's the, what's the big deal, Alfred? Well, basically that uh, the government of Catalonia itself is now uh, arguing that this, uh, this is not as official as the first one was. It's not signing any decree, for instance, to call for this vote. And um, this does not offer a democratic mandate to proceed further towards independence in case the result is a yes. But let me, let me add something as well. I mean, uh, uh, no matter how much disappointment there might be, because we thought this would go faster, smoother, and it would be easier. Uh, the driving force be behind this is hope. This is not about politics, this is not about law, uh, or not just about law, not just about the economy. This is about hope. People are hoping for a better future. And this is people power in the move. It's uh, uh, people uh, trying to decide their own future. And that gives it a very colorful and hopeful kind of slant to this whole movement around independence. Well, uh, Inez, uh, I, 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 Inez, go ahead, please. Okay, I, I don't agree with the, with the statement that that will be a democratic votation. I mean, we don't have any gu guarantees. We don't have even a, a, an electoral census. We don't have anything. The, go the government of Catalonia has uh, asked the population to be a voluntary to participate in that voting. And I assure you, that the people who are against independence will not go to participate in that votation. So I assure you that the result will be yes, because it's a non-legal participating voting and it's a completely controlled by the government, by the public media. So the, the result will be yes, because only the people who, who support independence will go the 9th of November to vote in a illegal, informal votation. You know, that's not democracy. Voting is very important. And we agree with the voting so and, and the right sorry, of voting. Miss, but Miss Arimada, sorry, sorry, but illegal, you cannot illegal, say, you cannot say this situation. is not democratic. Yes. Any, any no, not people's no. we any don't have any popular guarantees. mobilization is democratic. Any popular mobilization no, no. is democratic. If we start saying but that popular voting civic no mobilizations guarantees. are not democratic, then uh, uh, we voting. cannot discuss. Second, voting. second voting point, you're saying it's non-binding. Of course it's not binding. In, Ines, take, take a then, pause for a moment, because we, we heard your point that what's happening is not democratic. Let's okay, hear Aria uh, respond. Just, yeah, Ms. Arimadas just said it's not democratic. Uh, it has not. It has no. It has no guarantees. Uh, uh, obviously, yeah. any any mm, public, any political mobilization, any civic mobilization is democratic. If political public mobilizations are not democratic, then we are not living <laughs> in a democratic. Is there a difference uh, between being country, democratic and maybe being legal? Is that in Is that what, you, then, what yeah. you're saying? And then legal yes. about being legal. Uh -huh. Well, no court has said that this second mobilization is uh, illegal. So I don't know how Ms. Arimadas can know it's uh, it's not it's not legal. Uh, some court would have to say it is an illegal I mobilization, say, and I, I haven't say, seen this. I, did, I haven't said. Yeah, that you just said it was undemocratic and illegal. I I'm think sorry. the so result. I think the result will not be a reflection of what the society thinks, because because only so the people who is pro independence will go to vote that day because it's completely controlled by the government. The volunt the volunteers yeah, that's, the that's government because your party has is telling them the not to go and vote. To that's like because your party is so telling them to boycott Femi. this vote. Sorry. You know? I, I like I think, voting yes, but Femi. with Femi, could I situation. Let me just bring in Sonia and then we'll bring in Femi, Alfred. could I clarify a point? Very, very quickly, because I know Sonia's been, okay. she's been waiting for you to stop talking so she can start talking, and I <laughs> think she's going to be waiting a long while. Alfred, Alfred be quick. <laughs> yeah, no, Femi, just uh, uh, let me clarify a point. Uh, on November the 9th, people are called to vote yes or no uh, about independence. Oh, so I, I would encourage Ines to vote no. In fact, I will struggle. I will struggle with my, my, all my efforts to ensure that yeah. she can go to the polls and vote no. And I think that's, uh, that's a basic guarantee that people can vote on, um, um, differently and can express their views right. freely on the independence of Catalonia. I think that's yeah. fully democratic. Ines isn't convinced by that. While she continues to nod her head, let's bring in Sonia. Sonia, go ahead. No, because 
Let, yes, let's bring in, let's in, in, Ines, I, I hear you. Let's bring in Sonia. She, she wants to add something else. Yes, just one second. Trying to put things in place. Uh, everyone has said things from uh, their perspective. Obviously, both Ines and Alfred are speaking from also their party's perspective. But I think we're mixing things. So there's a dichotomy. What is legal, as you were just clarifying, and what is legitimate, right? And the problem here is that a political conflict that should have been solved in a political way, and that's another debate probably, it's being faced with other tools, such as the judiciary, such as um, threatening, etc. And that is uh, really damaging the debate itself. So I agree with Adrián when it's not about being legal or illegal because it's democratic and that, Inés, I'm sorry, you, we cannot say it's not. People are speaking, people are not using violence, and therefore that is democratic way. I this guess just, just take a, some, all take a I collective can, breath for I a can, moment because I want to bring in the community as well. I hear the debate bouncing backwards and forwards. Just take a pause. Milika. We're seeing some of the same, same words that we're hearing on our show today mm. online, whether this is democratic, not democratic. So Ferran on Twitter says the Spanish government is behaving in an indemocratic way and not letting the referendum take place. And Alfred, someone else has that view as well. This is a video comment. Have a listen to this video and let me know what you think. The grassroots movement is stronger than ever. I mean, the the demonstration we organised on September the 11th was absolutely co colossal and was commented right across the world. Um, the the problem, if you like, is how the political parties are trying to uh, squirm their way through and past a whole set of obstacles that the Spanish government are placing as regards the vote on the 9th of November. So Alfred, is that how you see it also? He, he puts the blame on the Spanish government and saying uh, the parties now have to push their way forward. I, I would say that's quite accurate in the sense that if uh, it looks a bit messy, it's because the Spanish government has done everything in its power to prevent people from expressing themselves in the ballot boxes and voting freely. So, uh, and I also agree uh, uh, on what he says that uh, it's basically a people's movement. When you get millions of people in the street in a country like Catalonia, which is only seven million in population, uh, that means it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a huge majority of the country that's on the move with a very hopeful manner and trying to get to a better place so uh, uh, yes I fully agree with uh, with that comment yes so Alfred what is actually on the ballot so November the 9th there's an unofficial vote for independence in Catalonia so I go in if I was a Catalonian and I go in and, and I see what on the ballot paper what are my options what does it say yeah, the first question the first question is whether you whether you want a Catalan state. Okay. Uh, it's about statehood. And okay. there you can vote yes or no. Okay? In case you vote yes, then there's a further second question where you can specify whether you want that state as an independent state uh, or if you want that state as something else, like a federated, confederated state or whatever. So it's actually a bit more complex and yeah. that gives room for people who think that uh, Catalonia should be tied to Spain in a somewhat uh, federal fashion, for instance. There's a middle of the road option as well, which uh, probably represents uh, people also, uh, people's options much better in this case. All right, so Adria, how do you, um, from where you are right now, which is the Spanish courts intervening, suspending a, a more official referendum, how do you get to independence from this stage that you're at right now? Is that even possible? Well, everything's possible. I mean, um, uh, blacks and whites were segregated up until the 60s in the US, up until uh, somebody stood up for it and uh, sit down on the bus. Uh, everything's possible uh, and, le and laws change. So uh, what I see is uh, we will probably hold this, uh, this uh, non-binding consultation. I wouldn't say it's not official because it is official. It's been called by the government, so it is official. It is non-binding and it is a consultation. Uh, I, I think that we'll, we're likely to hold it unless the Spanish government ultimately thinks uh, like Inés Arrimadas and uh, suspends it uh, as well. And then after this, um, we'll look at the results. If there's uh, one million, two million uh, people yeah. pro-independence, then yeah. I think it will be justified to call a snap election, which eventually, in case uh, the the pro-independence parties uh, yeah. win, then would probably lead to a declaration of uh, independence.
Wow. Okay, that's that's some procedure there uh, for you, Ines. Um, uh, if you wanted to stop, is it this momentum? Could you call it momentum? What would you do? Do you need to do anything? Sorry? Is there sense? Sorry, this I sense? lost the connection. Yeah, Ines, do you hear us? Are you with us? Are you back with us? Hello, Ines. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. All right. Let me just go back to Alfred yeah. then, while we work out our connection with Ines there. So, Alfred, uh, we we had you on our show two years ago. You were very optimistic. Now, how would you how would you frame your mood right now? I'm I'm even more optimistic. Look, in these two years, uh, we've had uh, we had huge demonstrations of millions of people in the street. Mm -hmm. It's quite clear that people want to vote the huge majority of people and it, I, I would say it's also quite clear that uh, probably a majority want to be independent and that's been evolving it's been growing of course we don't really know until we count the numbers and that's why we think we should be going to vote and see how many are in favor how many against independence mm -hmm. uh, we also think well, that uh, legal aspects are important but there's something much more important than that to us which is the democratic path. Democracy should prevail, and the will of the people should prevail. Right. I'm glad. Okay, I'm we glad have 30 seconds yeah. left to go. Sonia, whatever you were thinking, remember it, because I have okay. to take you to the post show. All right, don't forget it. I'm going to ask you in about two minutes' time. Malika. Where's our community leaving us? I'll leave us with this comment uh, from Vicente on Facebook. And he says, while there's confusion among politicians and Catalonia, it isn't between the citizens. The people are in action. And he says, we're working nonstop for this movement. And he means the movement for independence. Okay, the conversation's not over. You heard Sonia. We also have Adria, Inez, and Alfred in the conversation too. And you too. Hashtag AJ Stream. Malika, if she likes it, will put your tweet into the conversation as well. That's in the post show, stream.aldazir.com. But before we go, Go there. Here's Malika with a look at some of the other stories that we're following. We start in the U.S. where a video meant to highlight racial profiling of Muslims has been exposed as fake. Don't walk away from me. Yeah. I'm an officer yes. of the law. Okay. Why are you walking away when I'm talking to you? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just talking with you. There's nothing. Nothing. Get against the wall. Earlier this week, the stream brought you this video from Adam Saleh and Sheikh Akbar claiming to show bias by a New York City police officer. But after the video went viral, the men admitted the entire encounter was staged. I apologize to anyone that might have been misled that this is an actual event. It was a dramatization, a reenactment of what happens to us when we film with our traditional clothing on. In addition to apologizing, the men went on to explain their rationale for faking the video was to bring awareness to racial profiling because this doesn't just happen to us, it happens to many people. Some online are still upset despite the apology. We get discriminated enough in this country. We don't need you making fake videos portraying that, tweets Humam. But others continued to defend the video despite the revelation it was staged. Safia writes that the video was trying to demonstrate what usually happens. Racial profiling needs to stop. Our next story is out of Pakistan, where one province in the predominantly Muslim country has decided to officially celebrate the Hindu holiday Diwali. Hindu government employees in Sindh will have the day off, in addition to receiving their salaries in advance. Online, Pakistanis express their support for the provincial government's decision. Hina tweets, very well done, Sindh, for celebrating Diwali, a brilliant step towards social harmony others need to follow. You can let us know what you think of these stories by tweeting us using hashtag AJStream. I love Diwali, Festival of Lights. We used to celebrate it in Birmingham in the UK really? when I was a little girl. Very multicultural. Of course we are. All right, so I'm taking Malika and you, if you can make it, to the post show, stream.aldazira.com. But before we get there, let me tell you about what we'll be doing tomorrow. A bump in benefits. Some companies are paying female workers to freeze their eggs so they can delay parenthood. Now, is this a generous offer or a nasty warning about pregnancy in the workplace? I know you have an opinion. You can weigh in. Hashtag AJStream. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.
Hello, this is The Pro Show. We're continuing our conversation about the prospect for Catalonian independence. Let's get right back to the discussion. Let's see if Sonia has a really great memory. Sonia, I put you on hold for a moment. We were right at the end of the show. What did you want to add? I do. I was going to say, um, I was very happy to hear Mr. Alfred Bosch uh, explaining the difference between the right to self-determination with, with, with many people are now defending and the fact that some or the majority of uh, parties in the Saskatchewan society are pro-Indie, which are not the same thing. It's different things and different people who are defending both things. That one's uh, first thing. The second is he was, uh, uh, say, uh, sorry, he was saying about democracy and how he wanted to be democratic and, and Catalans want to vote, which is perfect. But I think we haven't really heard, we haven't had the chance because we were so focused in asking Madrid uh, for the right to vote, that we haven't really had a campaign uh, where we have been able to listen to the yes and the no, and what each thing entitles. Because also be, uh, inside the pro indie movement, I believe there are many different options and many different views of what Catalonia they would like to have. And it's not clear because they are working together in making possible the vote, and they are not being able to express their different views on to vote what for okay i i, I, I get that i i get that let me just yeah. go go to the community for a moment though and then and then come back to ines hold, hold tight for a second right well Ines, i heard you say you agree and so i want to share with you some criticism of, of the pro-independence movement that i'm seeing online um clara tweeted in that yes catalans want change but the independent strategy is being led by the bourgeoisie and by the right wing she says do you think that there <laughs> it, 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 i hear the laughter and i'm, I'm going to guess that's from alfred but Ines, i'll let you go that's first do you think that no, that's that Adria. <laughs> Adria's laughing. Do you I, think that there's any think, a, a, a truth to what she's saying in your point of view? I think it's, uh, it's all about a strategy of not uh, speaking about the real problems of the population. I mean, uh, the, the Catalan government has been focused on saying the people that all our problems come from Madrid. So they don't have say they don't have any responsibility. You know we have very important problems: uh, unemployment, corruption. The government is involved in in very huge cases of uh, corruption. We have an in, an efficient uh, administration, but they don't want people to talk about it. Ines. They want Ines. to focus on that issue. So I think it's Ines. a strategy. Is it is it has always been yes. yeah. Sonia is calling yeah. your name. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, because I'm sorry, I can't I help. Um, I this speaking. this was acceptable two years ago, but I think nowadays, with how huge the movement is, you cannot remain into that. I speech. live I live in Barcelona. I live in Barcelona, Sonia, and I assure you that all the mass media and all the schools are focused on that argument that all our problems come from Madrid and this is a very dangerous I oh, don't come on, it's, come on. It's, you just you just need to walk hate. down the streets of it's Barcelona and see the hate. flags I go do. to the bars and see how people day. are talking about it come on I live here I live I here, here. Yes, I live in Barcelona. <laughs> the others too I just because you. I'm skyping from Madrid I don't I don't think I'm not aware of how Barcelona is, is feeling and breathing but I think your speech was um, reasonable two years ago. Right now, it's not. All right. You have to listen to citizens and you have to see what they are demanding for. It might be yeah. legal, so, illegal, so, legitimate sorry, or sorry, not. Sorry, one thing. So one, one little thing. I mean, uh, apparently it seems that uh, um, uh, parties that are against the referendum, so anti-referendum parties, anti the will of the, of the people parties, seem to think that people cannot think of more than one thing at the same time. Uh -huh. uh, we can be worried about uh, unemployment. We can be worried about the crisis. We can criticize corruption. I've uh, <laughs> written extensive articles about corruption in banking in Barcelona and Madrid. Mm -hmm. And we cannot be worried about a structural change for uh, Catalonia and I uh, sorry I just want to uh, show you something and maybe you can tell me what you think about it uh, because so uh, it, I didn't so want to end this so, before so Adria, showing this you is, just something. This is the yeah. last thing we're going to see and then I'm going to thank you for your yeah. time. Make it quick. All right, show it fast. Just very quick. What is that? Quick. This is an article from yesterday Let me see if I can read the Madrid it. newspaper. Yes. It's and the it says what? of David in Catalonia yes. saying basically that uh, the government of Catalonia is acting like the Nazi government. And Ooh. this is written okay. 
in the third newspaper of Madrid. All right. Now, that is so contentious. Everybody I know is going to bubble up and want to have a debate with you. We will take that debate online. Let me say thank you so much to Alfred Bosk, to Inez Arimaras, to Adria Alsina, and also Sonia Undoff. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We've had at least two shows about Catalonian independence. This is the third. Mm -hmm. I know there will be a fourth. Yeah, Thanks will. to the online community. Thank you for watching as well. Let me tell you about the next A-Day stream. A bump in benefits. Some companies are paying female workers to freeze their eggs so they can delay parenthood. Good idea, bad idea. Hashtag A-Day stream. We want to hear your thoughts on that. I will see you online. Thanks for watching.